And we are live with the one and only Graham Sanders. How are you doing today, Graham? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, definitely. I think of so far all the guests I've had on the podcast, you I know definitely the most. I mean, I would say in iRacing, I talk with you and Kalen. I'd say the most between anybody. So I guess this podcast is um, going to be really chill, laid back, and yeah, pretty fun. So how have you been, man? How's uh, how's life been? You know, life's good. Life's good. Um, streaming's. I mean, as you know, I'm enjoying streaming a lot. And uh, I think it's been what six months now. Five, Has it really months? been that long? I think. I think. I think what? it was like S September when I started. September, October. Well, I know it was. But, um, yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Because I know one of your first streams was the VLN race with Luke. I remember that you were in the Audi. Or... I think that was the first stream. That was the first stream. I, I streamed. I streamed the Bathurst twelve hour last year, but it was like, yeah, that, mean, that probably I doesn't count. There's, yeah, I didn't count that one, but yeah, I think VLN with Luke was my very first one. Yeah, and then, I don't know. I can't remember if I started streaming regularly after that, like right after that. I, I think sure, you but, did. I don't know. I definitely I so know too. that. I definitely know I was the first person to make a clip on your stream. <laughs> it was the one where yeah. you... Yeah, when you I wrecked. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, like, the spun one, it around. One of the many times I wrecked, yeah. I forgot. You said something super witty after that, too. You were like, oh, like, that's oh, not that's good. good. Or yeah, that's going like, to hurt. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> then it just cut yeah, off right so there. so obvious. Yeah, I know, right? Well, no, that's cool. And the thing with you starting up your stream, to be honest, I've had, I've had quite a few people come to me asking for like who are starting up their streams and stuff and i would say of those people there are a very small percentage of them who actually continue to pursue it and so when you came i don't even know the first time like i didn't convince you right it was something that you actually wanted to do i think i, I always wanted to do it but i didn't really, like really know how to get started i know you you did tell me that i should do it and you said that some people in your chat said that, that i should start streaming yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, screw it. Let's give it a started, shot. Started up. Did you think when you were starting that, I mean, were were you all committed from the very beginning? Like you were like, oh, I want to do this like daily. Like every time I play iRacing, racing, I want to be streaming and stuff like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I that's so. awesome. I don't think I don't think I went. I mean, of course, I had like the one day a week where I didn't stream, but no, I think once I started, I think after like the first week or two, mm -hmm. and like saw. Uh, even the tiniest bit of growth that I wanted to do that for fun. Yeah. It's a hobby, you know? Yeah, definitely. It, it really adds another, cause like I've always loved racing games and I racing particularly, but streaming kind of added a, a whole new element to it. Definitely. Yeah. It made it way more enjoyable than it was before. Uh -huh, yeah, for sure. And you meet so many really cool people that I feel like streaming is kind of a gateway to being able to meet a ton of people in the yeah. community who, yeah, you know share interest in like the laughs and stuff i mean i'm just thinking <laughs> like the like karen and stuff the clips all that sort of stuff <laughs> the clip the clip maestro <laughs> yeah and what's funny is a lot of this stuff would have ha well a lot of this stuff would have happened even w without you streaming but like since you're streaming it's like on record now you know you can see kind of uh -huh. it's like a your your racing history is kind of marked and like it's in history if that makes sense yeah, like no, it does. you can go back and see stuff or there's see a record reactions there's a record that's the word i was looking for yeah i always do that i'll always just randomly go back in my clips and like look at the really early ones and just yeah. watch all the like especially the top clips i mean 95 percent of them are karen but yeah dude, dude I know, it's right? always so fun to watch those yeah karen <laughs> is so great with that sort of stuff that no that's cool i think Cause you started your stream it's so weird because it seems like just yesterday that you got your webcam and just yesterday that you got uh -huh. your new mic yeah. it doesn't even seem that long ago but if you were to look at your like the whole grand scheme of things i mean you've had you've been streaming way longer with your webcam than without it i think right or is it i think probably, so i would I say so I remember when i got my my webcam i got the mic before the webcam i think chin chin sent me the mic um, yeah you did get the mic before the webcam i think you yeah. know what dude i'm like 99 percent sure because i kept badgering you to get your 
webcam and you said oh after christmas or you said like after I, no you said after you move into your new apartment that's what you said yep that was mm-hmm. it you were like wait till i move in and that was i think what late november or something like that or early december yeah i think i think it was mid mid november oh, i okay. think i might have i think that's when i ordered the mic and i oh, got okay. it like a week later yeah because I, yeah i just remember that um that's crazy man it's just it's really cool to see like the growth and stuff of the stream and the people that you bring in and the communities and stuff and it's really really cool um for sure yeah i'm loving it how did you get into i racing i guess or okay we should probably i don't know okay let's rewind to when you first found an interest in racing because i know your dad played a big role in that I guess. Yeah. So I guess maybe talk a bit about that and like your upbringing and stuff within like yeah, sim racing and all that. So I, um, my dad, my dad worked, he, he worked for Mazda for 30 years. Um, he was the Mazda motorsports parts manager. So he was basically in charge of getting all the factory Mazda teams or all the back, the Mazda back teams, the parts that they need, whether that's before the season, if there's an emergency, they, they, they need a part mid weekend. He was when I was younger, when I was growing up, he was always he was always traveling all year round, um, and so I was always going to races a lot. But I would say the one moment that brought that really got me into racing for my twelfth birthday, we were at winter testing, and uh, this was back when Speed Source in Grand Am was running the RX eights, mm-hmm. and there was a team in uh, Speed World Challenge, which is now the Pirelli. Uh, world challenge or whatever it's called now yeah i know what you're back talking in the about. day it was called it was called speed world challenge and it, there was a team called tripoint and they ran mazda six touring cars and we were at winter testing and they surprised me they threw i, I wasn't even paying attention they threw a passenger seat in one of the tour in one of the mazda six touring cars and they said here grab a helmet hop in the car you're gonna go around for some laps around the what? Yeah. yeah dude it was my 12th birthday and it was dude fucking full tilt dude was, that was the most that was probably the most fun I've had in a car period like ever really like, even even now that I've been driving for a lot like a long time and i've I've driven on tracks in the past and stuff myself, but being in a legit race car when I was twelve years old it yeah i i i liked i liked cars and racing before, mm-hmm. but then that made me really understand like the thrill of it and all that, and it was like going down the corkscrew. Dude. No, it was a it was a, it was a touring car, so it's not like you're going around in like a like a DP car or something like that, or even like a GT3 car. It was it was slower than that. I think we did like one, one thirty going into turn two, one thirty, one thirty five, which is still pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. And going down, going down the corkscrew, mm. you feel your your stomach just like, like rises like, in, really? in your, your torso. Oh, it's it's like a roller coaster. It, I bet it's unbelievable, dude. It's unbelievable, especially when I was that young course the driver it was randy popes i don't know if you guys have heard of him some of you guys may have heard of him um randy popes was driving and he of course he 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 was a professional he knows the track like the back of his hand and he we're coming up to the corkscrew and we're just about about to go off the edge Uh i'm like i'm a 12 year old i'm like yeah what's he doing yeah this is we're gonna crash we're gonna crash and then we 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 we, we go off the edge as if it's cliff but Uh we, we, we go down it's just that it's like it's it's literally like a roller coaster. It's that that feeling and that you get deep in your stomach. Yeah, when like you go off over. A dip or yeah, I know awesome. exactly what you mean. Dang, that's crazy. And so that was that was your twelfth birthday. And before that, you were mm-hmm. were you really into racing much in general? Or I didn't follow any racing. I, shortly after that is when I started following F one. Oh really? Um, okay. Yeah. So that was that was like tw- that was two thousand seven. Okay. Yeah, that was two thousand seven, and. Yeah, I would say because like, before that I was I went to races a lot and, um, so I I liked it I liked it, but I didn't I didn't have an obsession over it like I do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, but yeah, like when I was little, I went to I've probably been to Laguna a dozen times or so. I went to Sonoma a couple times. I've been to the Long Beach Grand Prix a lot. That's just because it was forty five minutes from where I used to live in California. Um, that's if you ever have the chance to go to that race, you have to go there. Because I mean, it's not in downtown Long Beach, but it's like it's right next to it. And oh. on the on the back straight at Long Beach, there's a there's a 
walkway that goes over the top, like going, going across the back straight, hearing the, I guess now it's different because the Corvettes aren't as loud as they were. It's not that grumbling V8, but hearing those V8s go down the back straight and it bounces off the buildings in, in Long Beach and, oh dude, it's, it's a different experience. It's really cool to go to Long Beach. Dude, that's um, sick, man. So you've been to pretty much every, or not every track, of course, in California, but track. a lot of the big ones though. You've been I've to. Been to I've, been, I've been to every track in California. Um, I haven't been to, the only track that I can think of that I haven't been to is Thunder Hill. But that's not really a big track. It's not, it's not famous. You probably haven't even heard of it. No. But they have the 25 hours of Thunder Hill. Which what? is, I, I think, it, I think it's in the winter. I think it's in December. But um, it's it's like a it's not club racing. It's 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 one of those races that kind of has everything. There's usually like one LMP3 car, and there's like some radicals in it. There's some people running just like a almost stock M4. So it's just like you it's, kind, it's of, kind of everything. everything. It's kind of it's for fun. Yeah, it's for fun. There's it's, it's 25 hours. Yeah, they just did 25. I think just to, <laughs> just to flex. Be like, just to we have one more. We have one more than everyone else. Yeah, and then um, my dad said that I I'd been to Mid Ohio, but it was like I was a baby, so I don't I don't remember it. Um, I've talked to you about this a lot the the Super GT race. Oh, at, uh, at yeah. Auto Club. I guess Dude. back in the day, back in the day, back in the day, it was California Speedway. But I mean, I've I've told you this. It's I wish I wish I remembered that. I don't remember it because that that I was like eight or nine. Yeah. So it's like it was just another race. I didn't understand how significant. How, yeah, I mean, it was the only time Super GT has raced in the states that I can remember, at least recently. Maybe they didn't like the '90s. I guess mm. back then it was JGTC, but that was really cool seeing the seeing all the NSXs and the the RX7s and I mean all the iconic JGTC cars. Didn't you say? Because we yeah we have talked about that uh, before, but you, you, was there anything you remembered from it? I thought you said there was something you remembered from it. <laughs> oh, actually, I know what you remember from it. Yeah, speak <laughs> away, Rusty. I didn't. I, I the only thing that I remember, I remember seeing the cars. I don't remember like each individual car and how it felt and all that. But I remember seeing this being in the suites with my dad and one of his coworkers. And it's just all the Japanese models, just all the way down the pits. <laughs> My man, Graham. And dude, I was eight years old, <laughs> and that's hey, what boys. I was. <laughs> they left an impression, absolutely. Um, no, that's cool, like for sure. It, it kind of makes me regret, kind of in the same note. In 2015, I think it was the V8 supercars went to Coda. Yeah, I didn't yeah. go, and it was the I think the only year that they went, and. What? Was it just one year? I thought it was two. You know, Maybe it was yeah, two. You're right. I think it was one. I, I don't know. I know it was definitely in 2015, but I was really um, just like, I was just sad about it. And I mean, in your case, it's like you went, but you don't remember. And it's kind of understandable because you're super young. But it's like, I remember seeing when the tickets were on sale for that. And like, I remember yeah, like, thinking older. about going. Yeah, I mean, I was... In 2015, I would have been like 15, actually. Yeah, so 15, 16 years old. Were you into racing as much as you are now? Um, uh, no. Well, okay. I, I don't know. I used to go through waves, I guess, in in of racing. So yeah, like, I, 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 but nothing, I guess, as serious as it is now. But I remember. I don't know. Like. I remember I was kind of a NASCAR fan because my dad was, and I mean, my dad had season tickets to the Daytona 500 from 2000 or from I think like the 90s up until like 2008. But of course, I was born in 99. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so I went to like I think the 2000, I think the 2001 Daytona 500 was the first one I actually went to. I don't remember it, of course, because I was only like three years old, two years old. But and so I was a kind of a big NASCAR fan, uh, kind of growing up. Cause it was always on TV and stuff. But then I remember, what was it? I, I remember going to a game store and I, I saw this racing game. It was called uh, F1. It was like F1 champions or something or F1, F1 world championship. I think or F1 I, 2006 championship edition or something like that. Yeah. It had, yeah, it had like yeah. Alonzo's Reno on the, on the cover, the blue. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yellow. yeah. I had that one. Yeah, that man. One. Yeah. That, so that was, um, that was, I picked that up because I was living in Indiana at the time 
and I thought they looked like indie cars and I was kind of big into indie car because when I moved to Indianapolis in the airport at Indianapolis they had the die cast indie cars at these shops because of course like Indianapolis is is has the indie cars all that sort of stuff so yeah. I was like, oh, these cars are sick, so I wanted to get a game on it, so I found this game in a game shop that was F1, but I was like, oh, they look close enough, you know, they're both open wheel, <laughs> and uh, then I started playing that, and then that's when I started to get way more into road racing and kind of, like, pushed aside, I guess, like, more of the the oval uh, side of racing or whatnot, but yeah, that's crazy, man. I definitely wasn't like you, though. I mean, you, like, racing... I, since your dad went around and you traveled with him to every place or for the most part, not every place. Um, more so when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, the last race that, well, he, he's been retired for three or four, uh, 20, almost four years, three and a half years. Cause it was 2016, like August when he retired. Mm -hmm. Um, and that year we went to the Salem six hours at Watkins Glen that mm. was that's the last race that I've been to. Wait, really? Like, and uh, dang, twenty sixteen. Yeah. Well, you're going back yeah. though. You told me this year. Or, yeah, we're going to. Um, my dad bought a truck and a camper trailer. We're gonna road trip out to California, huh. and we're gonna camp at Laguna Seca for the IMSA and the IndyCar weekend. So that's gonna be. Dude, that's that my favorite. Sick, my man. favorite trip by far. Yeah, I went to um, Saint Petersburg many years ago. Uh, I've only been to Watkins Glen once. Um, I went to what's the track in Utah? It used to be called Miller Motorsports Park. Willow Springs. Oh, no, 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 in Utah. It's uh Utah Motorsports Campus, I think it is. I, I went no there idea. one time. It's a cool track. It was like 125 degrees, so that sucked. But um, Willow Springs is in California. That's kind of out in the desert. Oh in California. yeah. Dude, I went there that's a for fun a, track, dude, to drive on. What that was for? Yeah, it's a sick track. I think they do like twenty-four hour races there too, but like for low, low, low I think level. So yeah, I, I I know my Honda Fit uh, races a twenty-four hour there. That's one of the classes <laughs> at Willow Springs, man. That's yeah, how the, I know that. There was that. a class. Um, actually, no. The, the one time I went to Willow to Willow Springs was um, they had a it's called B Spec, and I think I don't know what the series is now. It was sanctioned by the same people that sanctioned uh the parallel challenge there was a, a really low class called b-spec and it was like mazda twos like mini coopers honda fits the, and there was another car the pirelli world challenge or whatever that's that's like um gt uh four GT, yeah gt4 they had gt3s I don't. I don't know if it's still around. I think they changed it to like the. It's the uh, on like GT America. Yeah, or yeah. I that's think, what I, I think went that's to what last it year. Is now. That's actually what's racing at Coda this weekend. That uh, Tyler. Oh, is that this weekend? Yeah. Or no, sorry, next weekend, a week from now, when I move okay. out, so I won't be able to go. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um. That's crazy though, man. So your first race is going to be Laguna Seca in over, in like four, four years. First, uh, yeah, four years. That's crazy. What's like the craziest wow. track you've been to, or like the most? I don't know. Like, I get Laguna is cool. What about like tracks? You went said you went to Watkins Glen. Sebring? Watkins Glen is beautiful, and I, that was in the summer too. So it was. It's not like. I mean, even in Colorado, I I'm, I mean Texas might be the same same way, but even in California, um, actually in, in Colorado, everything's dead in the winter. But in California, every, every, everything's green. Mm -hmm. New York is green all year round, and then in the fall, it like turns orange and mm -hmm. orange and yellow. But I was there in like it was July, I think it was. So it was July like or August, peak of it the summer. Was gorgeous, dude! It was so green. The rolling hills. I think our hotel was like maybe half an hour from the track. Dude, but that's sick. when you're up, when you're there, the the stands that are right on the outside of turn one or not turn one, um, the final corner. Yeah. And you're up at the top. You can see for miles, like miles and miles and miles, and it's just green rolling hills. It's that's that's like, awesome. You, you don't notice that on iRacing because obviously you're only on the track. Well, yeah, the scenery is trash outside of the track on iRacing, anyways. It's like 2D, yeah. like it's yeah, it's not great. <laughs> it's not it's not great at all. No, that's but sick though. I I heard Watkins that Laguna, cool. or so, yeah, I heard that Watkins Glen 
It's kind of a middle in the, of nowhere track, isn't it? Like it, nothing's really close to the track. Yeah, the closest, tr- the closest, I guess, town is Watkins or uh-huh. Watkins Glen. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like one lane highways, or I guess two lane, like one each direction. Mm-hmm. That's kind of all that's around there. There's some people that live around there and some like ranches, but the biggest city to Watkins Glen might be might be Rochester. Really? Which isn't close. It's like crazy. probably maybe three hours, I think. Yeah, so it's like far away from where yeah. But yeah, I'd say I'd say most tracks in this in the in this in the country are usually kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I, I think so for the most part. That's how Coda is. Like there's really not that many Yeah, you actually you're right. I never thought about that because Road America's like that, Road Atlanta I think is like that. I mean Laguna is like that. <sighs> Laguna's probably, I'd say, 15, 20 minutes from Monterey. It's probably uh, just so tested. Sonoma is pretty close. I think so- um, Sonoma Sonoma is pretty close to cities, a city, isn't it? Or is it also in the yeah, middle? Yeah, because it's, it's north of um, San Francisco by maybe 30 minutes. It's like by Napa, right? Napa, California. Or do you, maybe you don't know where that is. No, but... it's not that. No, it's, it's, I would say it's closer to to san francisco oh really okay well i'm just terrible with geography um that's okay me too (laughs) no that's yeah that's crazy it reminds me of like in japan because i remember i was looking on google maps or whatever and um okayama i was looking up okayama dude okayama is truly in the middle of nowhere like it's like an hour drive from any city to get to the track so well that's all that's kind of i mean obviously when, when they build a track they want to have a lot of land and they're not going to build a track right next to a city because most cities expand. Mm-hmm. That's what, I mean, the close, the out here in Denver, we have um, Bandemir, which is a drag strip. That's right on the side of the mountains. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, there's Pikes Peak International, which isn't really in Pikes Peak mm-hmm. or near Pikes Peak. It's a little bit away, but, um, and then there's a, a short oval track. I think it's called, it might be Denver International. I don't know what it's called, but um, I think I think the KN cars race there. But that's that's not in Denver. That's like half an hour north. Yeah, yeah. It's you don't want to build a track really close to a city, and then that city ends up really expanding, and they're like, eh, "We're gonna buy that property and we're gonna tear it down." Yeah, that's true. My dad was actually telling me about a track, um, Ontario International or Ontario Motor Speedway, which is like 15 minutes from Fontana from uh, Auto Club Speedway. Mm-hmm. And it was a, uh, it was kind of like Indianapolis. It was, I think he was telling me yesterday, it's a two and a half mile oval, but it's like Indianapolis. So it's more like a rectangle Yeah. and it had a road course and they tore it down because the city wanted to build something there. So they bought, they bought the property and they just, just demolished it, demolished it. Dang. Yeah. That's crazy. Cause I think it tracks like, like uh interlagos and stuff like i think that track when it was built was just in the middle of nowhere it was like a swampland and now interlagos you know is literally in the heart of the city like that that track is just built in the city and they never i guess tore it down same with um oh what track am i thinking of i think oh never mind hockenheim still i think in the middle of nowhere i don't know but yeah it's really i guess interesting um that and also i could see the noise as well because you were telling me that people you were saying at laguna or whatever people had their exhausts what were they called remember the they're called uh laguna psychopipes or something people <laughs> now kind of like are just make it a joke and they make they make like these stupid stupid pipes that are like four feet long that point <laughs> off to the side of the car away from the the the, the mic because it's right outside of turn five there's a there's a, a meter that measures the the, the, the noise of the cars, uh-huh. and if it's, if the car's too loud, then they're they're gonna they're gonna fine you, and then you're, you can't come back to the track unless unless you're quieter. But yeah, it would, they would be it would the the original ones were just a small. They would just take the exhaust pipe and just point it to the point it the other direction, and the the mic wouldn't pick up as much noise just because it's facing the other direction. It's like. It's like with the mics that we have right in front of us, if you face the other direction, it's not going to pick up as much. Yeah. It'll be a lot quieter. It's the same exact thing. Yeah. So they'd have the exhaust facing away from like all the yep. residential areas and stuff to lower the 
the noise stuff or whatever. Yeah, all the roads that lead up to the track, people live on those roads. Mm. So like five minutes from the track, or less than five minutes, the people that live there. Dude, I bet you so, those freaking those houses have to be so expensive, man. Oh, they're it, it will, and not only because they're right next to the track, but they're huge. Like they're, mansions. So there's a lot of land. Yeah, they're mansions. That's crazy. So. Yeah, I know you were telling me um, as well. I guess kind of going back with the, I guess racing experiences or whatever. But you were able to sit in the Mazda Seven Eight Seven B, correct? Mm. Yes, that car was at the car is in Japan normally. Uh, Mazda Japan has possession of the car, uh -huh. and they had it in California for. I think it was good. there's a there's an event that Mazda holds. It's called Seven Sock. Now it's held at Auto Club Speedway, and it's just a big rotary fest, basically a bunch of RX eights, RX sevens, mm. and Mazda brings out all of their iconic rotary race cars, like the RX seven GTO that races in IMSA, mm. the seven seven eight seven, which mm. is like the white the, the Mazda had Mazda USA has the white and blue car. The, I think it's the fifty six, which is the sister car, and then. Um, they bring out the 767B, which a lot of people confuse it with the 787. It's slightly different, but it's, it's, it's the same livery. Mm. Um, but yeah, they had it for seven stock, the 55 787B. And they had it at my dad's uh, shop. He, he, my dad worked at the, the R&D building in Irvine, California. And they had the car there. And my dad, I think it was a weekend. It was like a Saturday because my dad took me to his work and showed me the car and had me sit in it and I've, i was like six seven years old either i have a picture of it somewhere my, my parents oh you need to it. you need to get that I picture need to find that picture yeah that'd be this content it. right there but it was um so i was i was tiny i didn't get a, a good feel of, of how the car felt i mean if i sat in it now i'd be too big <laughs> i'm sure cause... yeah me too believe me <laughs> but um that that was another thing that i wish i I was older and remembered it because I mean, sitting in the seventy seven B, it's like a that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. No, for sure. For me. But, Dude, that's um, crazy, man. Like it just, yeah. I guess just the whole like significance of it is just so huge. I mean, that's that's just that is so crazy. Because not yeah. only did it win Le Mans, like sitting in any Le Mans car that won, it's like okay, that's that's like really really cool. But like to sit in a very special car that won Le Mans. The is... first Japanese manufacturer to win Le Mans, yeah. And the only rotary to win. Because after that, they banned it. They, they banned the rotary. That's crazy. What exactly is a rotary? Or what? Uh, God, it's so hard to explain. Um, think of it, so you understand like how an engine works and like you have the piston in the, yeah. in the chamber, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and a, a rotary engine, um, I don't know if you can bring up a picture to show to show the stream, but um, think of it: um, the camshaft, not the camshaft. The uh, yeah. So basically, the rotor it's it's shaped like a triangle, okay? Shaped like a triangle, and it rotates inside of a housing. And each side of the rotor is intake exhaust, and as it rotates. It's I can't explain. I'm so bad at explaining things. No, I think I I, I have a picture pulled up. Like I kind of see what you're talking about. It's like a triangle thing, and it it just rotates. So, so instead of a piston that goes up and down, it's a triangle that rotates inside of a housing, and as it rotates, it goes through its cycles. So it basically it's basically going through three um, intake exhaust cycles in one rotation because it has the three sides. If I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong. Um. Yeah, I see what you're talking so, about. But it, it it's it has advantages and, and disadvantages. And unfortunately, the disadvantages of, um, outweigh the advantages. The disadvantages are it burns a shitload of oil. It burns, it uses a lot of gas. It's not fuel efficient for its life, but it's very smooth. It's very smooth. I, you probably haven't driven a rotary, but if you drive a rotary, the phone just went off. Um. um if you drive a rotary, it's, there's no vibration at all. There's absolutely no vibration. Like with a V8, if you if you rev a, if you rev a V8, it yeah you can feel the car, the car like going yeah, back and forth. It. Like yeah, it, it'll it'll tilt the car back and forth. But with a rotary, it's the way it's built. It's very very smooth. 
That's crazy. That's cool. And they're tiny too. Tiny too. The the four rotor, the the twenty six B that ran in the seventy eight seven. That was only a, it was a two point six liter, and that had that was a four rotor. There is a six rotor. I think Matt, the shop that makes all of Mad Mike's uh, drift cars, I think it's called PPRE. They built a six rotor in like an RX three or something like that in Australia or New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the RX eights and RX sevens that were sold to the public, those were those were a thirteen B two rotor, which is a one point three liter. That's crazy. So tiny, so they they can produce a lot of power for how small they are. They have no torque either. It's always so cool seeing, I guess, just innovations like that. You know, I mean, it kind of sucks it got banned, but like. I don't know. It's just cool yeah. to see. It's kind of like with Mercedes right now in F1 with the whole like, you know, like camber crap. DAS. What's your opinion on the DAS? I think it's incredible. I mean, it's like you, you you can't you can't say oh they're cheating they're cheating. Well, there was no rule against it. I mean, now there is. I saw someone was saying in chat last night that the FIA knew about it. Mm-hmm. They were told about it ahead of time, mm-hmm. and then they changed the regulations for 2021 so they can't use it but i guess i i'm not quite sure how it's working this year yeah but um no i think it's i think it's incredible i don't know the way i think of it it's like there's got to be it's got to have its downsides i mean if you're if you're pulling and pushing the steering wheel to adjust the toe I mean, it's 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 a very simple concept if you if you think about it when you push out it toes out and then when you pull it back it brings the wheels back in uh-huh. so it makes sense when you think about it but there's got to be like weak points in the suspension like suspension failures yeah in there's my more mind, going I don't, I, on I don't see how the yeah it's i mean there's a reason why they or they do what they do. Yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like uh, our, our armchair, or what is it? Uh, yeah, like an armchair warrior, like sitting here, like, you know, <laughs> saying, like, oh, you know, I think that system's not going to work out. I mean, they know, obviously, like 20 times more than us, they know what's a billion what's times more. Wrong. They're not going to say it, but. Uh, no, but I think you're, I, I kind of agree, though. I think that, I mean, I'm not really a big fan of Mercedes, of course, but, like, you got, it's just, it's innovation, man. You have to man. give them credit. Dude. Yeah, of course, you have to man. Give them credit. Definitely. It's like, it's like when um oh I can't remember what team it was but the the uh what was I don't know what car it was I don't think it was a Brabham but it was um it had the vet the it had the the jet engine on not not the jet engine <laughs> it had the vacuum on it. it had the the vacuum and it sucked the car to the ground and then they banned it right after that and then they had the the six wheeled car I don't think they they didn't ban that I don't think but that just, just ended up not working out well yeah it just ended but up it was not a working. cool concept it had, yeah and it had the four wheels up front that steered yeah four wheels it's just, <laughs> it's just teams bringing up or coming up with new ideas to or like competition this is just a perfect example of that yeah and like uh, i think it was was a baron who had the double diffuser in t- 2009 i think they had was it that i th- yeah there was something that i thought it was the double diffuser i don't know what it was but i'm not sure i don't know it's stuff like that that goes down in history is like ideas that either will go down as being really cool or just stupid, but I, I think that Mercedes know what they're doing, and I think that it's... Oh, yeah. I mean, they... It's crazy. And what's crazy to me... And, well... I don't know what to think of it, because it's like they're bringing this... I think it's actually kind of genius. Like, they know the regulations are going to change. So, they they said... I saw somewhere that Veltri knew about this since, like, last year, since, I think... Like the beginning of last season last year or the beginning of the season last year but they didn't wow. want to do it until like they had it ready they just didn't want to use it until this season because people don't have no teams don't have time to make it and there's no next year really for this current car yeah. so you know i guess they just they figure kind of overkill it's like you know we want to freaking win another world title in the uh this era like we're gonna just go overkill and bring another insane feature that's just gonna make mm-hmm. it even better even easier to win so it's very interesting how mercedes i mean danny rick was was saying it how mercedes has been dominant the entire the entire hybrid era 
Yeah. And yet they're, they're still the ones that are pushing the envelope and inventing new ideas. Dude, it's and no crazy. One else it's yeah. crazy that no one like, else is doing Like, this. you're right, man. I mean, there's so... You'd expect maybe some level of complacency or whatever after all these years, but they're still just as insane as they were when they started, man. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's crazy. And, I mean... I'm really curious to see next season how stuff unfolds with the new regulations and whatnot because, I mean, I, I, history has shown, I mean, when there's a big change in the regulations, typically another team starts to dominate. I mean, Either that or things change. Things yeah, will change. Yeah, it's not. Gonna... I'm, I'm a strong believer that McLaren's going to. I think they're going to join the top three teams. Dude, they're, they, they've they they've had one of the best cars on the grid for a while. I'd say one of maybe one of the top three cars, like chassis. But it's been their it's been their power plant that's been holding them back, and they're going to have Mercedes power next year. And we all know how good Mercedes is, and how and, and how fast and how reliable their power their their power plants are. I mean, you throw, you throw look at Williams. <laughs> to be fair, okay, yeah, but they're, but they're, but yeah, but their cars. Their cars no, you're right. It, it's more of the cars. car itself, not the engine. I never, yeah, th- yeah I never thought about it. Mercedes are, have won. They they have single handedly have the best car and the worst uh, cars on the entire grid. Like that's an achievement yeah. right there. Well, and plus, I mean, Williams doesn't get the the the. They don't get the, the newest and there. greatest. Yeah, yeah, like they. They get like I mean, the hand me downs. Exactly. They get they have like a like an old spec engine and all that. It's it's the same thing how Racing Point um has last year's Mercedes and Haas has last year's Ferrari and uh Alpha Tari has last year's Red Bull essentially. Yeah. They don't they don't they don't get the newest the newest stuff. Hmm. It's always the factory teams that are that are getting all that stuff. So but I I think McLaren will be getting I hope I posted getting, uh, I posted on Twitter last night. I said McLaren. I I actually pinned it to my Twitter as well. I said McLaren will win the twenty twenty one constructors championship. <laughs> so I I really yeah, hope like old, but... <laughs> okay. Well, see, this is where the doubters come in because listen, if I'm right, I have it pinned on my Twitter. Come back to me uh, November twenty twenty one, and <laughs> uh, what can I say, guys? They'll call me a genie. Simple <laughs> as that, man. I, I I think I think they'll be very competitive. I think they'll have uh, yeah. maybe a win or two because I mean we all know that Lando and Carlos have the talent. Definitely, I mean, man, they're freaking. Lando great. had a lot of, I mean, a, a lot of his um, really good, what could have been good results, got screwed over, like uh, Spa, like when his when his when his engine went out, like no power, no power, no power. I have no power. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Yeah. I think I think the new cars look way better than the cars we have now. I think they look amazing. I think they look year. I think I think they look really cool. Um Yeah, I mean I think they look pretty sick. I'm I'm curious to see of course all we have are these just like rendered like proto uh, render rendered like mm-hmm. versions, but of course each team will be able to kind of make it how they want it. You know, within yeah. the regulations, so I'm sure we're going to see some really good ones and maybe some ones that are just kind of trashy looking. But overall, I think the new regs are really sick. It's very, like, simple, like, small-looking cars. They look like RC cars or something, but in a good way. They're just, like, super... I don't know. The cars that are... The F1 cars now are just so huge, man. They're super well, wide. I, th- I, think, I think the cars are still going to be just as big. Are they? They're, they're, they're going to be much simpler. Like... Like right now, you they have all the all the little winglets on the on like on the on the side, and the 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 wing on the back has like all these little all these little things coming off of it. And next year they're not going to have that, at least not as much. That's that's what they say. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they. I doubt they have it to where, like the front wing. This is how it is. Hmm. I think I think right now like the middle section, where it mounts to the nose that they can't touch which is why all those are flat but the, as soon as it gets to a certain point that's when they have all the oh, crazy crap all the little arrow pieces everywhere. on it yeah yeah i'm excited i think that i 
the question is like i mean it always seems like it's been three teams that are super good and then the rest not like at least from when i started watching f1 which was 2000 nine 2010 it's like it was always three top teams never like four or five top teams it was always like three teams fighting for wins you know and i hope next year we yeah. see like i want to see Renault doing well i want to see mclaren doing well i want to see ferrari doing well of course red bull i think i think red bull i mean i'm i think mclaren are definitely going to win the championship again this year I think you mean Mercedes? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, not McLaren. Mercedes. Uh, next year I think McLaren's gonna win. But this mm-hmm. year I think that, this year I think that Mercedes are gonna definitely win. Um Hamilton's gonna win. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's cool to like think that maybe Red Bull uh I think Red Bull uh have a chance or whatever, but I just don't think it's gonna I think it's as much as we all want another team to win, I, I just don't think it's gonna happen, personally. Um no. I think I think Red Bull's going to outperform Ferrari this year. Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying. I mean, I'm definitely sad by that, of course, being a big Ferrari fan. But I really just hope it's Ferrari not really giving a crap about the season just to invest into the 2021 regs. That's kind of what I'm hoping on. You know, that they're just like, mm-hmm. we're just going to throw the car we had last year, screw it. We're gonna put all of our funding and resources and brain power into working on the go gung ho for twenty twenty one. Yeah, I can see that. I don't think they're just gonna not gonna care about this year. They're gonna try, but their their main focus, I th- could be on twenty twenty one. That makes sense. Yeah, I think a lot are. That's what that's what people are saying as well about Williams because Williams are still nowhere to be found, and people are thinking like, I, mean, I also kind of feel like that's just what they're saying. Yeah, just to be nice. Yeah. Just just to like as an excuse. Oh yeah, they're like, yeah, we're just focusing on 2021. 2021 comes around, and be like, yeah, we're just waiting for the next regs. Like, we're just, we're focusing on 2027. Yeah, I <laughs> would just really in it for the long con here. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I don't know. It's the regs change. Is there like, there's not really a limit. Um, regs typically tend to change like what once every. Like every six, years, it seems six like. seven years, something like that. Well, because after twenty, after two thousand nine, I feel like the regs. Now this is I wasn't following it as much, but I feel like the regs changed kind of like in twenty ten because that's when you started having the really high noses that were like oh way dude off the I hated those noses ugly, man. the really ugly step nose dude those were trash like, those were horrible and then twenty fourteen obviously oh, of course. the hybrid era that started. And you had all the all the dick noses and yeah, <laughs> dude, that was so that bad. was so bad, man. They they still kind of have it a little bit. They still have that little. They're more like the chubs, little, dude. Little chubs sticking off the nose, like <laughs> it's not as Mercedes bad. is the Mercedes is the only team to never go with that trend, and they're still dominant. Yeah, like, the, like why don't people try to kind of just copy Mercedes? Doing? At this point, it's like just copying Mercedes. I mean, if what they're doing is obviously working. So it's just, I mean, I guess that's yeah. what uh, Racing Point are doing. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I hated those, um, like, the wings that, where it's like the nose stuck out and then the wings just were way below. Yeah, was, I did, yeah and it, I it, did it had, like the, like, the one foot tall, like, wing yeah. stance or wing. Yeah, dude, it was like an arm that, like... <sighs> It was, it was yeah, it was weird. It was terrible, and that's why I don't really like the uh, unpopular opinion. Maybe, but in in i racing the Audi R18, mm-hmm. I do not mm-hmm. like the look of that car. It's so ugly, dude. And the front of it. The reason I bring that up is because I think the front of it looks like the F1 cars from like the 2010 era, where it's like well, and the the nose is like squared off, but the rest of the car doesn't suit that. Like the Porsche, at least is kind of matches itself the porsche like, looks streamlined it? like the porsche looks like it's built to try and go fast the audi just looks i don't know man I, it just doesn't look well good in my opinion yeah there's but, some people that like oh it's the best looking lmp car we know who the... said that before we, yeah. we know those people yeah i don't know it yeah i i what really was sad speaking of lmp1 was when i was at um Coda this last weekend seeing three lmp ones and just like only three dude there are three lmp ones man what a rebellion and two toyotas yes 
And the Toyotas oh are handicapped God. from here to Mongolia, so you have just a rebellion who is like a lap ahead of everyone. I think it was funny how, uh, was it Kamoi Kobayashi who was saying something about how like the the, the rebellions were so, <clears throat> were so fast? <clears throat> and I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, and oh, I saw that. And in the second, the second you guys that. are handicapped, you're going to bitch and complain? Yeah. Like, well, get that out of here, man. I mean, I like Kamui a lot, but it's like, come on, man. Uh, like, look at Lama the necessary. last, like, four years. I know, right? Freaking A. So the second Audi and Porsche are gone. Oh, Toyota's winning. Yeah, and like, dude. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it's like, like, dominance, too. Like, yeah. it just was no, no I mean, it LMP just simply, well, I mean, it is a dead series now, of course, it's after this year. It's going to be gone, yeah. But, I mean, it's just sad to see it go like this because... And what's even <laughs> like they had a podium celebration as well and stuff. And it's like, what's the point? I mean, just have the at least just have the person who won because everyone makes it on the podium because there's only three cars. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. That is just kind of like weird. But WEC just in general, I, I it's just a, I feel like a dying I feel series. Like Imps is uh, Imps is definitely on a high. I feel like WEC, at least until the hypercars are out, is just not they're struggling. Dude, yeah, I agree. IMSA just keeps going up and up and up, and WEC just keeps going yeah. down and down and down. I mean, yeah, GTLM only had seven cars for for the twenty four, but dude, there were like almost thirty GT three cars. I think we're over. We're we have more than ten DPI cars, and I think with the new LMDH cars that are going to work for that, that'll be work in uh, in IMSA and in WEC and going to Le Mans. That's that's going to be cool. I'm really excited for that because the the DPIs that we have now can't go to Le Mans. Yeah, I, and I think it'll be cool. We could see Wayne Taylor racing at Lama. Mazda Mazda could, back at Lama. Mazda could be at, could be at Lama. We'll see about them because they they they're a much smaller manufacturer and it's really expensive to, to go to Lama. But I would love to see Mazda go to Lama. That would be, I mean, I mean, of course, yeah, I'm kind of biased a little bit, but. Um, yeah, well, I know. I mean, still though, it'll be, be cool. It'll be really oh, could you imagine they go and then they do a throwback with the seven eight seven B like oh, green they did and hundred percent green and orange. They they did that when I was at the, the Watkins Glen race. They had the they had one car that um that they had in the the orange and green uh, paint scheme from the seven eight seven, and then the other car was like the the red and silver. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you showed me that. I think. I think that race, that race was. I think everyone was doing throwback liveries. I think the the BMW, um, like like the M6 had like an old like M3 GTR livery. It was, it was like the, the the American flag one with like the stars on it. They did that. The uh, the Porsches had had an old livery. I think. Mm -hmm. it was, but yeah, I think I think once uh, once LMDH starts starts uh, starts going, I think it's going to be interesting yeah for whack and ipsa hopefully and i mean the hyper cars i think are cool but it's just sad to see i mean aston already i think pulled oh. out that was a huge blow in the side of like whack i mean that i think i mean th that was like i wasn't wasn't aston like the the first entry yeah they like, were the one ones the that everyone was talking from. about it's like they're and now they, they pull out of the program it's like oh crap like because now yeah. who are the only teams confirmed for hypercar you have the um no actually i don't even know who's who's uh i think is toyota doing it i think they said they were um let's see hypercar so it was like entries. the aston vulcan or something right or valkyrie no i think it was valkyrie I don't remember actually the name of the Aston. Well, what? actually, Aston Martin. It says Aston Martin postpones entry of new Le Mans hyper uh, hyper class. I guess it's better than just straight up canceling. But Peugeot is one of them. Peugeot. Oh, that's cool to see them back. I remember watching them uh, like a few years ago, mm -hmm. or, like ten years ago now. I guess I remember that. Yeah, I was... dude. I remember Gran Turismo. Man, I got that. I remember buying that. Peugeot LMP1 in uh, Gran Turismo. The, the 908 DPI FAP. I, I don't know. I think it maybe, the HDI FAP. Yeah, the FAP I machine. That. Everyone always made fun of the name of it because it had FAP in it. Dude, <laughs> yeah, I remember Gran Turismo 5. That was a sick car, though. Racing that at Le Mans. Mm-hmm. But I yeah. Those games, man. Yeah, me too, man. It's cool, though, that we both 
kind of grew up with Gran Chismo. I don't know if I ever told you my Gran Chismo story. I think it was. Yeah, you did. A friend's house said, yeah. he's like, ah, it's not that fun. Oh, but I really want to play. Yeah, really wanna dude. Play. And you played for hours and hours. Yep. And that was, that, <laughs> that was actually like what got me into like racing games in general, I guess. And also, Same for I, me. I don't know if more like serious, I guess, racing games. Cause my first video game I ever had ever in the history of existence was need for speed. It was Need for Speed Underground 2 for the PlayStation 2. That was my first Need for Speed game. It wasn't my first racing game, but, dude, I'm, I'm really salty about it. The copy that I had was busted. The, the, the disc had no scratches on it, but I would get to a certain point in the in the campaign or whatever they want to call it, mm. and one of the – it was called the – it was the, the URL race, the Underground Racing League races. Remember those? Dude, no. <laughs> I don't, don't remember, remember that. that? I don't one, of, that. one of one of those races wouldn't show up on my map. Oh. Show up, so, I, so I could never I I could never progress in the game. So you just sort of left and, to just free your own and stuff. Yeah. And I was I was left with like the civic like forever. Dude, I remember it's that like entry entry level cars. That, that sucks, man. Yeah, that really sucks. I don't remember really doing much of the story. I remember there was this car that I wanted super badly. Um, it was that green. It was, I think, on the cover of the game. It was like that green the Evo? Nissan. I, I was it. I thought it was like a, like a Nissan 350Z or something. It was like a, like a, oh. like a darkish green kind of uh, with like oh, graffiti on yeah, the yeah, side. Yeah, and it was yeah. like this chick who drove it. Actually, I wonder if I can pull it up. See if I can. Uh, Damn, see, I, that's probably that's probably one of my favorite Need for Speed games. I like Pro Street a lot. <clears throat> Pro Street was really good too. Trying to see if I can find the. Oh, I know which one you were talking about. I was talking about the one that was on the the loading screen, like when you first start up the game, the loading yeah. screen that had that girl standing in front of it. That's. Yeah, you're talking about. Uh, I haven't pulled out. Uh, I can't, they can't see the full thing, but. Yeah, you're talking about this. Uh, yeah, that Evo. No, I'm talking about. This was the one yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> this was the car that I that I. I think this is it. I don't know if you have my stream pulled up, but this was the one. Actually, I can just send you what it looked like okay. through Discord. Um, but that was that was the one that I I really freaking liked. Oh know. yep. I think this person like tuned it out though, because I don't well, remember that, the gold I don't rooms. think I don't think that's in Underground. I think that's a different game. But yeah, I know exactly what that car is. Oh yeah, I think it's like a. Yeah, you're right. The graphics are way too good. I guess, dude. Thinking back at it, I think I thought the graphics were so sick. Me oh, too. dude, th this is the car. This is actually the car. I'll show this from the actual game, and I remember. Um... Oh yep. Yeah, this car right here. Man. Yeah. The nostalgia, and then I remember playing like Midnight Club and stuff. Did you ever play those games? I yeah, Midnight Club three and uh, Midnight Club LA. I played Midnight Club LA so much. It was with Grid. Really? With <laughs> for, forever, dude. So much fun. Dude, I I don't remember the one I had was like <sighs> Midnight Club Dub Edition or something, or Midnight Club two yeah, it, Dub yeah, Edition. It was Midnight Club three Dub Edition. Or was it Midnight like Club three? One, yeah. I don't remember. I just remember it was like San Diego. Yeah. I think it had like it had actually a lot of it had San Diego, San Diego Atlanta, Atlanta, I think Tokyo, right? Tokyo. Yep, yep. Those were the three. Um, I remember that, and I remember I loved Tokyo, dude. It was so much fun to race there. But um, I played those games more than Need for Speed, actually, the Midnight Club games, and I still remember the soundtrack to those games, like those songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. Um, all that sort of stuff, but. Yeah, those, 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 yeah, were sick. But yeah, Gran, Gran Turismo was my first, like, not just, like, random street racing style game. And yeah, really liked it. And I was, of course, did you ever collect Hot Wheels? I didn't collect them. I had some. I, there's a box. Uh, my, my mom kept the box of all the ones that I had. It's, uh, it's in her basement still. She mm -hmm. wants to keep it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I probably had a couple hundred of them. Yeah, I didn't. I guess I I didn't really collect them, but I I had like yeah hundreds of them. They, yeah. I'd never had them in the box or anything. They're just in a big bin as well, just on top, like just piled in. But I remember playing with like Hot Wheels and stuff as well. Um, 
try to cl get into like collecting diecast cars, but yeah, kind of. Yeah, I, I could never get into that either. Yeah, just never really was my thing. They're so expensive too. Like, 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 like good size ones that are re like really high detail. They're so expensive. I, I understand like they're they're replicas of the real thing, but I, I could never spend three hundred dollars on a no. on a diecast replica. Oh, definitely not. I think it's I couldn't either. Not not really. I'd rather buy. I'm a big fan of just posters and stuff. Like just nice posters, kind of like the one you actually. That looks like a canvas. It is. It's canvas. It's it, it's like it's meant to look like it's painted, but it's not. But yeah, it's like a, it's like an inch inch thick. Yeah, that is. But yeah, that's sick. Yeah, my dad gave it to me. Dang. Okay, so cool. Yeah, I want to get something like that, especially for my new apartment. Get get some cool like posters like that and stuff. Um, I guess we'll get into iRacing and stuff because you're finally back on iRacing. Well, I guess you, kind of. You're, you're cutting out a little bit. I didn't hear that. Oh, I said, um, talking, I guess, a little bit more about iRacing. Did you hear uh -huh. that? I was yeah, saying yeah. that, um, you're finally back on, of course, iRacing with your yeah, scuffed. finally, dude. With, with the professional wheel. The, you don't. The, <laughs> yep. The top notch T29. <laughs> Yeah, man. It's, it's probably, I bet you it's good to be back, though, right? It's nice to be back in on, on, on iRacing. It's tough to get used to it because you're used to, or I'm used to the the close port wheelbase that has a lot more force feedback and a lot more just feedback in general. Mm. I mean, this, this, this gets the job done. Yeah, and but, you still have your pedals, at least. Like your yeah, the, pedals. the pedals are the main thing. If, if I had to use the G29 pedals, I probably wouldn't have even bothered to, <laughs> to go grab them, honestly. But what pedal no, do you have? I have the V3s. V3s. I've been thinking about getting those. I don't know. I want to upgrade to Hausenfeld, but those are so expensive, man. If I same. upgrade to Hausenfeld, I'd probably just I'd probably just get the sprints. Yeah, honest. same. I would just definitely just get the sprints because I feel like even the like lowest level of Hausenfelds are better than any any other pedals out there yeah i think they're like 700 other. bucks though they're they're still really expensive yeah but. and what was that one um not pedal but <laughs> it was uh oh it was the simu cube direct drive it was like 6k or 3k or something uh, like the, that yeah the, the the ultimate it's like 3600 dollars <laughs> euro yeah that's like four like, it's like over 4k the price of like the, the 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 level below it like the pro I, I I never see myself ever spending that much money on one piece of equipment for some racing. Like that's just insane. I mean, unless I was banking, making like millions or something. Like, it's, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I, don't I don't. I don't even know what more you get out of it. You know, like a semi cube, just the well, basic the, one. The 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 jump between the 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 semi cube two sprint and pro or sport and pro. <clears throat> it's like a two hundred dollar difference, and you get like the I think it's like eight more newton meters of torque, which makes sense. Two hundred dollar difference makes sense, mm -hmm. but then you get like another eight from the pro to the ultimate, but you're spending twice as much. I know there's like other different little like things that are better about it, but twice as much. Yeah, I, I think that that's a little. That. I'm probably going to get the pro, and yes, I know it's expensive, but. Thirty six hundred euros or whatever the hell it is for the the ultimate at doesn't unless you're making a lot of money and you can afford that and spending that much more money doesn't make much of a difference. Oh, dude, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I I could never. Uh, I don't think I could ever spend that much money unless I literally could just throw it away, like money wise, because that's just insane. Thirty six hundred. Yeah. I thought that my Fanatec stuff was expensive with like three hundred dollars for the wheel, three hundred dollars for the wheelbase, and three hundred for the. It's like nine hundred dollars in total for yeah. the three of these. Yeah. I thought I was a high roller, and then you just look. It's like God bless you. There's so much better stuff out there, man. It's crazy. See some like motion rigs. I think uh, Visaro makes like f they sell like full on motion oh, rigs. Oh God, and they like, think, look think, like cars. I, I think it. Yeah, I, I think it comes with pc as well like a really good pc but dude they're like 50 grand it's like what the <sighs> hell i know one of them comes with iRacing with all of its content on it <laughs> like everything 
Yeah. It, it has all the tracks going. It's still 50 grand. I Dude, that's... That. <laughs> I mean, that's just dumb at that point. I feel like that's more for something... Someone who's like a celebrity who has a mansion who's like, yo, this is the sim racing room and then just has that in there. You can just blow motion rigs, Motion rigs are cool with VR, but even then, I don't think they're that worth it. I'm not... I personally... This might be an unpopular opinion, but... I'm not really a big fan. I, I guess I haven't tried motion, motion rig yet, but it's I don't really think cool. I'd. Is, <sighs> it's really cool. It's really cool, but I, I not like dude. Like a, 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 I think a cheap, a, a, an affordable motion rig is like six grand, seven grand. I made probably more than that. It doesn't make sense. I did it. It's not worth that much to me. Yeah, it is. It is, it is really cool. It does. The immersion is there. But not when it's worth that much money. No. VR, I think VR is better than motion rig. The two of them together is awesome. But I would rather have V. I would rather have VR than a motion rig. And even yeah. then, I'm. I don't really think. I don't really like VR that much. I don't. I mean, I've tried VR, not on iRacing, but just in general. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool, but <sighs> I don't know. I'd like it a lot more down the road when it's improved and. Yeah. Same. I, I want to like wait the, until the, the graphics aren't that good. Uh no, they're not. It's it's I don't know. I wanna wait until it's cheaper and yeah, all yeah. that sort of stuff. So I like triples more than VR. Definitely. I it's just yeah. Oh hundred percent. Like I I agree with that for sure. I think I think triples are are better and I, I know just I know a lot of people get like motion sickness or their head starts hurting after wearing you know yeah. the headset for a while or something like that do you mind real quick uh re or turning off your camera turning it back on because i think yeah. it's like i'm getting some weird i don't know if the live stream can see it but i'm getting some weird purple <laughs> some weird purple effect there we go nice Is that better yeah it's better yeah i think it was maybe just some weird it must have been on your end i didn't see anything on my end yeah i don't know it must have been <laughs> something like that but Oh yeah, that's cool. Um, are you excited for the Cayman? Or okay, sorry, that's a dumb Come question. On, that's a lo dude. that's a loaded question. That that's is a, a terrible question, dude. That that's a loaded <laughs> question. I agree. Answer the question yes. for the podcast. Ter terribly excited, dude. You're absolutely oh. terribly excited. Yeah, I. I was telling you last night. And you're like, dude, you're you're gonna get bored of it until by the end of the week. Da da da. Like, nah. I I when the F three when the F three car came out, dude. That's I drove that. I drove that in MX-5 all week 13, nonstop, at least like, like when I could. Dude, I think what's going to happen is you're going to race in the uh, Cayman. You're going to love it. and that, But after a few days, you're going to be like, oh, I really love it, but I really want to race this in official races, and it's week 13, so there are none. And then well, you're going to switch to Farming Simulator. Just... <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. I'm playing, I'm playing it tomorrow with you, buddy. Hey, I, this um, is an all-week thing. No, no, no! I said Monday. I said Monday. <laughs> I thought you said Monday to Monday, like double, like Monday to Monday. And, uh, All right, we we got Graham going Daft Punk on us over here. We're having some internet issues, guys. You sound really Daft Punk too. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and change these servers here a little bit. Let's uh, see if we can reload this. Hello, test, test, test. Yep, yep. yep. All right, so, sounds better. I, yeah, I, I switched the servers. I think something was wrong with the server, but. I don't know, man. I thought you said farming simulator from Monday to Monday, meaning Monday to the next Monday. Uh, I, I actually know what, what I might have said was Monday, 5 p.m. to Monday, 9 p.m., same day. <laughs> I thought you meant Monday, 5 p.m. to Monday the next week at 9 nope. p.m., so like a nope. week and three hours. If you think, if you think I'm not going to do week 13 and drive the Cayman and miss geodesic qualifying, pff, you're crazy. <laughs> You're delusional, buddy. You're excited for, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for the uh, geodesic as well. That's gonna be fun, yeah. man. And especially with yeah. what five bone guys in there, three yeah. Caymans, two GT3s. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. I I, I hope I don't regret taking the Cayman, or I mean the uh, GT3. Well, I don't think so. Well, like, are you are you saying because of the because of the new tire model? 
No, because... Or just that the GT4 is obviously going to be the better car, but... Okay. Well, dude, if the GT4 is... <laughs> if I try that, I'm just like, holy moly, these cars are so much fun. You know, then I'm going to kind of regret it, but... I don't I, know. I mean... It's the the GT3s will still be really cool cuz you're you're getting a new tire model so it's going to be essentially I mean basically a new car. It's going to drive nervous. completely different than it used to. I, it's it's not going to be worse. It's not going to be worse than it is now. It'll be harder to drive initially, but once the tires heat up, I mean, look at I don't know how much you've driven the MX5 with, with the new tire model, but look at the look at the uh the Porsche Cup. The Porsche Cup now with the new tire model, once the tires are heated up, the car is phenomenal. I, th- yeah. I think the same thing will happen with the GT3s and GTEs. I hope so. Because, like, it just, I'm nervous because, I mean, those are the cars that I drive all the time. So it's a really big deal. I think it's a big deal just in general for iRacing, you know? I mean, so many of the, so much of the player base drives these uh, cars that it's like, if they screw up the tire model for the GT3 and GTE, it's like, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Yeah. That's that's a really big deal. But yeah, I'm excited for the Cayman. Uh, the new damage model as well. I felt bad because I realized after what I said on stream, it made me sound ungrateful because I remember I asked you about the tire model, or sorry, the uh, damage model, and you are like, it's great. And I was like, I think it's underwhelming. <laughs> I remember I said that. Like, I mean, yeah. I need to clarify. I'm still very great. I think it's still a, it's a miles improvement to what we have now. It's a huge, huge, huge yeah. improvement, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I just was expecting a little bit more, but I'm I, still I th- grateful. I think, the, I think the reason why you feel that is because with the F3 car, there's not much to the car. You have the yeah. monocoque, the nose, the wing, and then the wheels, and that's kind of it. And oh. the wheels fall off, the wings fall off, and the bodywork that's over like the side pods, those fall off. Yeah, and then there's just a lot. The percentage of the car that dis- that falls off on the F3 car, uh-huh. or or even the Skippy, is way higher than the than like a GT car. So that, that's I think what it is. You see the GT4, you expect the car to disintegrate, uh-huh. like it, like the F3 car does, but it really is the same thing. The wheels still fall off, bodywork still falls off. Yeah. So it's just that the car doesn't like. I mean, it doesn't. You can't total the car you can't just rip the front end of the car off like you do in real life <laughs> which i mean if they did that that would be incredible but I, they said like that it was well. they said that it was it had something to do with the suspension like they can't move the suspension anchors there's like i guess anchors on every car where the suspension is and they can't move those because it's like built into the physics engine mm-hmm. and that so they can't have a car like smushed in so much that like the whole suspension gets you know like pushed inward or something like that it's so. interesting you say that because like with the mx5 if, if you spin out and you back that thing into a wall dude the freaking rear w- tire is going to end up in your passenger seat it gets well, locked maybe, so far i don't the car, know, I don't know weird. well maybe that's not what it is i don't want to spread false news but i i read somewhere that i had to do something with the suspension that they I don't know, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. And, mm-hmm. you know, dodging tires and stuff on the track. Um, hopefully we see... I want to see, like, small debris, you know? Like, it's one thing when you crash to see, like, a bumper or wheels and stuff, but I want to see, like, more, like, like smaller stuff. Like, it's sprayed across the track, like, glass or, like... Yeah. Or not glass, since they don't have glass, but you know what I mean? Just, like... No, yeah. Smaller little, like, crumbs, basically, of the car. I think that would yeah. be really cool. But like I said, I mean, I'm really happy with what, what the damage model yeah, same. is. And I think really it's going to be sick. And I think the next step I, from here, it has to be the GT cars, right? Surely. If they... The GT cars and then the rest of the stock cars. Because the K&Ns have it. Oh, that's right. Or, or will have it. I, I bet you it's going to be... They're really pushing out a lot of the damage model cars. I think I think now it's gonna come quicker. I think I wouldn't be surprised if season three we get damage models for everything else. Yeah, or almost everything. Else. I think GTE G, or GTE and GTE or GT three will get it season three along with the stock cars. Uh-huh. So now, now that they have the general the foundation for the damage model for the sports cars mm-hmm. or the GT cars and the and like the K and N, I feel like they can 
do that much quicker for the, everything else. Yeah. No, and it's I'm smart. curious why we're just now getting the G, the GT ones because remember the the very first video that they showed. Oh with the yeah, model? Dude. the GT it was ones like were only the GT damage. ones. It was like GT was, ones and Skippies, I think, and F threes. Wasn't it? I don't think F three was in the original video, but yeah, uh, it's like why I wonder why they didn't release the GT one. Maybe it wasn't polished completely, but I don't know. Oh man, just in time for that one uh Watkins Glen 24 hour <laughs> the new <laughs> well but the other cars aren't going to have the damage model oh that's so... true what is it GT3 is or... it... I thought it was GTE I don't maybe know maybe it's all three I don't know but yeah it's cool I'm excited for that the new damage model I think honestly I've been I the thing I want the most in iRacing, I've been saying it for a while, like just tire compounds, different compounds for tires, I think would be so cool. I think, well, but if, if, if you're doing that with like the IMSA series, like it's not realistic. You don't have different compounds in IMSA. You have I, your dry tires, you have your, your intermediates, you have your rain tires. You don't have like soft, medium hards and all that kind of stuff. Everyone's I, on the same tire. It's like with F1, you have all the different compounds. Yeah, but like, yeah, okay, I guess you're right. And then like IndyCar, you have the the Firestone Blacks and the Firestone Reds. I, I don't know. But, I think that they that it would be cool to add, though, for the series that do have different compounds. Yeah, yeah for that for the F1 series that's so popular on, on iRacing. Uh, it gets incredible participation. Thousands of drivers every day. I'm really glad they added the, the damage model for GT1. There's so many people that drive that car that right. are just waiting for it. <laughs> it's a long, <laughs> the long-awaited update for the GT1s. <laughs> Yeah, the only reason GT1 died is because they were just waiting for this update, you know? And now that they have yeah. it, it's going to... To be honest... Could you imagine? Dude, <laughs> I'm actually going to awesome. drive GT1. I, I bet you GT1 is going to be more popular now. Or a little bit. At the I, very I, beginning, I, I think it will be. I we might so, get dude. some officials actually in GT1 for once. That'd be With sick. Like 11 people? Yeah, mm -hmm. man. I'd do it. I'd uh, do dude, it. If, definitely, if there were 10 man. people signed up, I'd do it. Definitely. I would definitely do that. Those cars need more love. 100% they're so good you fell in love with the Aston I fell in love with time. the Aston just by doing five laps at Watkins Glen yep and, uh -huh. I mean and that was on baseline setup too it felt amazing I remember it, it felt good didn't it it felt amazing yeah it feels good everywhere the Corvette's good too I did I drove the Corvette in a test server when I racing servers were down a while ago at Watkins Glen I did the Corvette and the Corvette I know was a little bit more difficult but it was still just as fun yeah it was it was really cool i like the corvette more but it was it was really cool and then i also want to see weather added i don't know about you but like rain and stuff rain and all that yeah and fog oh well they have fog well we have fog but i mean like it, it you know it changes and whatnot yeah i don't That'd know why really dude they could do that right now to be honest man like they have dynamic skies and stuff dynamic temperatures they have fog why not set up, you know, test a little bit in the waters of changing weather by having like a morning race, you know, like a, like, like an ILMS that starts at 8 a.m. Have fog at the beginning and then as the sun comes up, uh -huh. you know, it burns the fog away. That's, that's how Laguna Seca is. Almost every single morning, <clears throat> you can't see anything. If, if you're standing in the paddock, you can't see the top of the hill where the corkscrew is. There's a lot of times where I've been there and they've, they've, can't, they've red flagged because you can't see. Like the, like the really early morning uh, test set or practice sessions, mm -hmm. they'll red flag because you can't see anything. And once the sun comes up higher and burns the fog off, then they start running again. I think that would be really cool if they did that. Yeah, and I, they like can't. Surely they can because they have fog already. So yeah, why not just have something like that? Like all you'd have to add in is just the ability to have the weather change. Which I mean, well, they... I'm sh I'm sure you're able to tie it in with the dynamic sky. It's the same concept right like yeah. how, how like the clouds change and it'll be cloudy and then it'll kind of clear up a little bit and the track will get a little bit hotter on one part of the track than it is on the other i feel like it's the same kind of thing mm -hmm. i think that they definitely could do that i think they should like i racing if you're listening it's a genius idea it's it's an impl it's the uh, beginning of an implementation of like a dynamic weather system could you imagine doing a 24-hour race and having no, you're driving in the night and you can they you can see the uh someone builds a program for i racing that shows like the virtual like weather uh weather radar you see like a big like a red cloud moving over like lamar or something 
It's like, oh, in an hour, who's driving in an hour? Oh, if it's, uh, you know, freaking rusty. It's screwed. It's going to be pouring. It's going to be absolutely downpouring. Like, <laughs> oh, man, that just sounds so cool. And I don't think that that's that far away. I think they, they did confirm that rain that was coming, right? I think we might get rain this year, like maybe season four. I think rain is going to be, I, I would guess rain is going to be around this time next year. So like season two. Oh, okay. 2021. Well, 20, season, yeah, or maybe, yeah, season one, 2021. Yeah, that's when they implemented, what was the big thing they implemented this year for season one, 2020? Do you remember? Because I remember 2019 was the dynamic weather or dynamic sky, it, like actually shifted from day oh, to night. It was night. the damage model for F3 cars. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. What else? Was there something else? The V8s. It's not really like soup. I mean, that's a new car, but. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember either. But. Yeah, I I guess the damage model starting those those off and stuff were. Pretty cool. Um, well, I guess there's a there's some questions that people have asked. Um. Are you rusty? Cool. Uh, there are a lot of trolled questions though. So of course, of course, the regulars, I'm sure some of them. Yep. Um, I'm not gonna say any names, but <laughs> dude, there are so many questions. What in the world, dude? Okay. All right, we're gonna start with. Uh, okay. So first question is from Enchanted Outlaw. He asks. What is the racer or person who inspired you to get into racing and sim racing, and how did it change your mindset about racing? Uh, my dad. My dad. We were. I guess. I guess we didn't really go too in depth with with my dad, but he. Uh, my dad. When I was little, my dad got a, a PlayStation One and got Gran Turismo One, and uh, I would play it here and there. I was like four or five years old. I was like nineteen ninety nine, two thousand when that game came out. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I was just bounce playing pinball off the walls. <laughs> uh, but then like, once I got a little bit older and I started, I think like Gran Turismo three is when I started to kind of like understand a line and all that. So I was like 10 then nine or 10. And, uh, and I would start doing uh, split screen with my dad. And then that's cool. And like Gran Turismo four, we would start doing it. And then I would start to kind of, of course he was letting me win initially and then i started getting a little bit faster and he started he started actually trying and then i started beating him i remember when i was little he would uh he would stay up all night trying to set a time and i would wake up and like within 15 minutes i'd just blow his time out of the water he'd get all pissed off oh like my before word. he even woke up on the weekend dude that is but so yeah, cool was, that type of relationship my dad. it was definitely my dad that kind of taught me everything that i know now about or at least the basics of a racing line and like late apex early apex double apex all trail breaking my dad taught me all that yeah that's really cool especially for such a young age because that stuff it's drilled into your mind and then like you'll always kind of uh -huh. have that yeah um it's like muscle muscle, muscle memory. memory yeah that's exactly what it is uh it's miller time asks what hair products do you use rusty called lay right it's called lay right by i don't know but yeah it's, I, that's a troll question, but I answered it seriously. Lay, so, lay, try. lay, right. lay, right. Lay, right. L A Y R I T E. All right. There you guys go. Um, <laughs> okay. Liam asks if you could go to any race anywhere, what race would you go to? Oof. Any race anywhere. I'd have to say the Nurburgring 24. Really? I'm surprised you said that. Okay. What'd you think? I would say like Lamar or something? No, 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 no. I thought you were gonna say like uh like a Fuji race or like Motegi or something, like super uh GTO. If I if I could go to any race event, any spe specific event, any Pacific event, it would be <laughs> Nurburgring twenty four. If I could go to any track shit, it would probably still be Nurburgring. Because that's really? that's 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 my favorite track on the planet. I thought I it was Fiji. Or, 
Wait, Fuji? Or Fuji, yeah, sorry. Fiji's I, the water. I like... <laughs> <laughs> Fiji's an island that has nothing to do with Japan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. Turns out you are pretty bad at geography. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to um, say Fuji. Uh, I like... I would love to go to Fuji, too, but I... Th- but Nurburgring is my favorite track. So, I, yeah, I would say, yeah, I would I would want to go to the 24. 24. I mean, that's a definitely, like, a, a good answer for sure. A uh, Good question. Good question. Uh, Alexander Mesha asks, will Graham stream EU-friendly times on the weekends? So, stream the morning? I thought about it. I think I was talking about with you, Jack, wasn't I? About about Saturdays and Sundays streaming in the morning? Streaming, yeah, streaming earlier because it's nice to sometimes yeah it's nice to, to I, I actually I like streaming I when that. i wake up i think it's nice i'm gonna do that when i'm moving to my new apartment i don't have class in the mornings i don't know if i'll do it every day i think maybe like sat like saturdays or sundays i think i might do that just stream like like 10 a.m in the morning to like three or four <laughs> in the afternoon it's yeah not a bad idea not a bad idea good question oh my Bro, Milan. Jesus Christ. Do you, do you see the question? No, I don't have them up. Oh, uh, Milan, Milan asked the question How many girls have you slept with? Oh, in the last 24 hours or the last. last... <laughs> uh, what's, what's the time I, frame? I, I, I think the time frame's in, in the history. <laughs> in history? In, in, in your whole life. My, my body count? Yeah, your body count. Nine? Nine. Eight or nine? P nine, yeah. P nine, my hairline. Okay, okay. Back hairline. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, um, a good question, Milan. Uh, Champ Cart asks, "Do you think adding refueling in the twenty twenty one will make racing better?" Uh, I know it's not coming, but it's pure hypothetical. I think Champ's Wait. talking about F one. I want to see refueling. I, I understand that the reason why they got rid of it is because of all the fires and stuff, but I want to see it. It'll add. It'll yeah I don't know it'll it'll make pit stops more interesting or like if they do refueling like the way they do in other series where you can't refuel and change tires at the same time mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think that would be cool because then it's it it because I think right now not enough goes wrong in pit stops and when I say that I don't mean like fires and people getting hurt I mean just errors Haas <clears throat> yeah but <clears throat> yeah Haas, dude. Haas, Haas every Australian, Australian GP, ever. GP it's, it's gonna crazy. happen again oh dude it's like I mean I feel like <laughs> but, it's cursed or something man I don't get it. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think if they did refueling, it'd be pretty cool. I think it'd be cool. It adds more variety as well, and more strategy as well. The races, you yep. know, like under fueling and then pitting early or and stuff like that. Same fuel saving. I mean, they, they do that now because they have they have like just enough fuel for the race. Yeah, I think right. I they they no they they have uh oh what is it they have less than enough fuel for the race. Or so they do. They, they do have to save. Right? Yeah, they they fill up with <laughs> less than they actually. I think they fill up with less than they need. Than what's really needed. What's really needed. Yeah, and then just yeah. save throughout the race. To I think that'd be cool though. I think it'd be very cool. Yeah. Um, Ben asks, how many times per hour do you get hit on by guys for your sex- sexy looks, big boy? <laughs> These freaking questions, dude. Oh, only you, Ben. Only you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Karen asks, is there anything that surprises you about streaming? It could be anything positive or negative. Anything that surprises me. Um, for me, uh, one thing that was, I guess, difficult initially was having to interact with chat constantly. Cause I mean, as a streamer, you kind of have to do that. If you mm-hmm. don't interact with chat, no one's going to care. No mm-hmm. one's going to stick around. Um, I know there are some people that will, that will just watch and they don't like participate in chat or anything, but you do, you do have to do that. And I, at, at first it was a little bit more difficult having to r- race and do that at the same time. <clears throat> but I feel like that's something that's, I guess it's not really a surprise. I kind of knew that going into it. Um, yeah. But it was, it was kind of like a, change maybe or something like that yeah definitely good question karen good question that's a good question uh miller but no, i don't think i don't really think there's anything that really surprised me <laughs> you, not yet anyways uh miller that's true. miller uh asks oh we're having some issues i think with the stream here 
Okay. Get your shit together, Jack. Come on, man. Can everybody hear me right now? Hello, hello. It's just showing the red little square on OBS. There we go. Hello, hello. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, Miller asks, how do both of you guys feel about new streamers coming into the iRacing scene and community? I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. I don't think a lot of people... I was listening to this is I mean this is still on topic. I heard some comedians talking about this as well. They don't see other comedians as competition. They they other people doing well in that industry is really good for them. I think for us more people coming into the streaming uh community and doing well, it's only going to make i racing do better and it's going to make it easier for you. Yep, I agree. So I guess really not there's really, I mean, at least from what I've noticed, there's not really any shit talking between the streamers. Like, there's no, I mean, sure, there are maybe some that have a little bit of beef, but it's not like, I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's not I mean? like, uh, I would say it's good. It's definitely good for more people to get into streaming. And I definitely encourage it because I'm glad I got into it. And I'm glad you guys convinced me to do it. Yeah. No, I, I, I have to agree with Graham Miller. I think that having more streamers getting into it is good because overall, everyone kind of benefits from it because if someone starts streaming and someone's like oh this is a cool content creator who might be new to iRacing then eventually they'll, they're going to start looking around at other content creators who also stream and then they'll find you know me or Graham and then it's just it's healthy for everybody I think so mm-hmm. um, yeah and there really isn't much much beef or anything or toxicity within I guess streamers um Nothing like what's his name Chapman in uh, i racing. <laughs> he good old good, Raymond. He's a good pal, uh, Raymond Chapman. He's uh, my idol. Um, so no, Miller. On a serious note, though, no, I, I, I don't see that there being any negatives. Really, I think it's really great uh, for sure. <laughs> All oh, right. Geez. Uh, Amsteriga asks the question. Clarification on the toy wheel comment. <laughs> Clarification. Well, uh, sure. I'm sure you're expecting me to be caught with my pants down right now, but no, I never said I hate the wheel. I, dude, can can you guys see this? Do you guys see how much wobble there is in this thing? <laughs> Look at that. Are you sure it's not the dude, mounts there, Rusty? Is it your dude, desk that's getting a little loose? My desk and you my is my it rig, your, your my, 80 my 20 rig. Rock. Yeah, I think it's falling apart. <laughs> it's just the, the raw force feedback is just too much for it. Uh, yeah. No. Higher than you want me to right? clarify, Amsterica, Um, is I I've I always recommend this product to people who are just getting started because it's it is the best the best starter uh piece of equipment. And I, I I use this, I use the G twenty seven for like four or five years and then I use this for like two or three years. Like it's it's a good pr- solid product. Um but I still stand by what I said about about it's definitely closer. I didn't say it is a legit toy. I say it's closer to the toy category. So I still like it. I still like it. Now, Jack, you agreed with me at one point. Stop. No. I, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I need to actually clarify this. So what you said, so the reason I'm agreeing with, so you, you said that, when you, when you told me, you said it's closer to a toy category than a real simulator thing. That I agree with. Mm-hmm. But so is that the only thing you said? Or, cause, or did you actually I, ever one, I once said, call it a toy wheel? Did you ever call it a toy wheel? There, I believe there's a clip. I am 95% positive. <laughs> what I said was it is closer to the, the, the toy category. And then chat freaking blew up they're like oh, how could you <laughs> okay Dude, so you... i'm not calling i'm not calling it a fisher price or like those stupid like wheels that Honkers. you just hold that's not no no like the ones that are just like motion like oh a motion like the screen. xbox uh xbox yeah, wheels I, I, I didn't say it was that okay so so God, you said that it was more you, you you never said it was a toy wheel you simply said it is more closer it's closer to, to the, the Fisher category. Price category than the. Uh, no, 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 no! I never said Fisher Price. I said okay, but yes, that is true. <laughs> okay, they would sell this at GameStop or Best Buy. Yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't sell 
Fanatec. I, uh, maybe like the like the, the didn't Fanatec used to have like wheels that that competed with like the G twenty nine. Dude, I don't they used know, to do man. That? I don't know, but like I I remember a friend talking about Fanatec having like a like a a more entry level like a three hundred dollar wheel or something. You're not gonna see a semi cube sold at Best Buy. Oh. They would sell this at Best Buy, but I'm not. That's not me saying that. Oh, it's a shit product. Okay, so. I'm going to stay out of the situation, but I will, will say that I do agree when Graham says it is more like a toy than it is a wheel. However, I do. Oh, I didn't even say that. Wow, dude. <laughs> or more like a toy than a, more like a toy than a, sorry. No, I, I misspoke. More like a toy than a, <laughs> what did you say? I was, no, I was I trying said, to say what you said. I just said it's closer to the toy category. Than what though? And it is like, like legit sim equipment like okay. a sim uh, yeah I, I i was i was more i was trying to say what or trying to copy what you said sorry i didn't mean to say closer to a toy than a wheel but um yeah i think that um i i agree with that but i definitely think that all uh you know wheel uh all wheels should be treated equal in this uh Equality. This equality for all, all wheels. wheels should be created equal yeah and i think uh i agree <laughs> all, all wheels should be created equal so yes <laughs> uh i guess hopefully that was enough for you caitlin um florida fan asks favorite favorite of the three nsx skyline or supra i have mine in a heartbeat me too skyline same yep i was gonna say that as well skyline. by far well I wouldn't say by actually I'd actually say by far yeah. Like the Skyline's awesome. Skyline GTR is my one of my dream cars. Yeah. Um, okay. There. De- I mean, with I guys, no more trolley questions, guys. I'm just gonna answer these two that are trolley, and then no, I'm not gonna read any more trolley questions. Oh jeez. Um, Demi asks, when are you having kids, and when are you getting a girl. <laughs> Let's just say you don't know about my personal life. All right, there we go, guys. Euripus with a with a question <laughs> uh, drops the Cayman in week thirteen. I think he's asking, is the Cayman getting dropped in week thirteen? Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Excited. It's like four it's hour awesome. long downtime. Um, Sim Racing Dads asks, God bless. Uh, hi, all. Hey, what's up, Sim Racing Dads? God bless, man. I'm it's looking. Okay. For my first sim racing cockpit, which one would be good? A good one. First cockpit, the one that I had was the uh, shoot. I think it's called Open Wheeler. I think that's what the brand is called. I think it's, it's like two hundred bucks, two hundred fifty bucks. But um, that's what I had with my G twenty nine for a while. Um, and it's got a seat. It's got the mount for the wheel pedals, and it's got a little mount for the shifter too. And it's, it's not something you want to use with like direct drive because it'll just rip the thing apart. But I, I'm not sure what kind of wheel you have, but for like the G29, it's perfect. Yeah, like Actually, I even, wheels. I well, I even use it with my with my club sport base. I even use it for that. Now it did it did shake a little bit, but yeah, it wasn't... it's definitely worth it for your for your first one. Go with that. I think it's just just look up open wheeler cockpit. I would sim cockpit. I would do that. Um, and then another good one that you could look up is the play seat challenge. That's what I had. That was so simple, dude. It's oh, like, yeah. a, it's a glorified, yeah, it's a glorified lawn chair pretty much. And it's so comfortable. It's chair. <laughs> it is, but it's so comfy. Like I could, I fell asleep in that multiple times. It's just so comfy. So play seat challenge and the, what, what did he say, Graham? Uh, I think open wheeler. Just look up open wheeler sim cockpit. I'm sure you'll find it. Yeah, uh, both pretty cheap uh, in the grand scheme of things, that is. Um, Liam asks, how many warnings have you gotten uh, from Nim for being a serial killer? I've had some conversations with him. And then hopefully the conversations didn't go like uh, that one guy at the Nordschleife. That was crazy, man. Dude, oh my god. That was crazy. That's, that's, one of, that's one of the best clips I've seen. And the guy's like, <laughs> the best clips go I've to seen. hell. He's like, he's like, go to hell. Who are you to tell me to shut up? It's like, like you're, you and I are going to be exchanging emails after this, buddy. Or he then said something like that. And then Dan, Dan Revito, uh, he's just like, 
he's just like enjoy your vacation buddy yeah like that. Like, dude it's... and then and then nim was like like hesitating to say that he's the one that kicks people off the service yeah that was that was just the whole timeline of that was just it kept getting worse and worse it's like he said something bad and you're like oh he said that in front of him and then it's like it's like oh my god he said that and then he said that and then when he was like go to hell it's like oh my gosh like it just couldn't have gotten any worse man it, there's no way he knew who nim was because no at the end he's like, dude i know i know who you are and he's it's like just, oh i know who you are it's all good man like, no, or like we're all good yeah. man like <laughs> just trying to backtrack after just telling him to go to hell i i think that that was um that that was like i mean that was kind of golden content not gonna lie um and and, and, yeah. and that was dude i feel bad for nim though man but Ugh. hey dude that's truly what i feel like you know nim is kind of like um or not nim sorry like drivers it's kind of like you remember when you were in high school and they'd have like the principal or someone come in to like monitor the the teacher and how they're teaching the class and like the teacher acted way different in front of the people than when they just normally uh -huh. taught. Yeah. It's like that but for drivers, you know, it's like when Nims in the session, everyone acts I feel like more uh appropriately behaved, yeah. Yeah. yeah behaved. Exactly, but then to see this guy who I guess didn't know who Nim was, it's like he's finally seeing like what iRacing really is like when he doesn't drive in it. <laughs> like Nim finally knows what we all get to hear every single time we uh, we go through turn one at Monza and and people get punted and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Okay. Let's see here. Next question by Karen. What is your opinion on Smurfs? What change would you make to prevent people from feeling the need to do so? That's kind of a loaded question, I guess. Just let's just say, what's your no, opinion I, on Smurfs? Okay. Uh, I know a lot of people think it's shoot. That's a, it's tough. Like I don't see myself ever making a Smurf account. I understand why some people make a Smurf account. Like Max, like Max Benicky, who's got like 10k IR, and I think his Smurf accounts, he's at like 6k now. Mm. I think. Because once once you're like once you are in top split, and I think if you're if you're like high two k, low three k, you're going to be in top split most of the time. So it's like it's not there's not really a difference at that point because you're in top split whether you're ten k or four k or like you because you're you're what two point eight k now I think. Mm -hmm. I think I mean you're you're almost always top split too. So, mm -hmm. but I guess when you're when you're just starting on a Smurf account, it's different because you're racing against rookies and you're racing against people in D class. So it's a little bit different, but a lot of them do it because they don't want to get shafted by an idiot lapper in third split, or I guess it is still top split because they are 10K, but, and then suddenly their IR is getting tanked because I mean, they only gain like 10 IR for winning. So like if they get taken out, they're going to be, they're going to lose a hundred IR like that. And a lot of those guys, they, the top split special events like Daytona and Lama is like super super important to them so they mm -hmm. want to they want to they want to keep that spot so it makes sense i would never do it though yeah um i think my opinion on smurfing i think i, I i'm against it um mm -hmm. always personally i i think it's it's always just really i don't like it at all i think that i think the the main reason of course people do it is to um you know race and not yeah be stressed to lose like 200 ir if they finish last because they get taken out or whatever but yeah. it's like i i just i i don't really see why they can't just race on their main account because there's so many people who still race on their main account and if you're that worried about getting taken out like i don't know man it's just like yeah. the lay of the land you know like you're you're that good just I don't know, and I know Sven. He's no, yeah. on. The, he he only races one account. He's like nine point four k. So I feel like there's really no excuse. Uh, saying you know if if someone makes the excuse like oh I just don't want to get taken out and stuff. Um, it's just I don't know. I I just think it's. Uh, I, I think some of them probably also do it because like they're ten k r ten k nine k r. There's not really anything like I mean there isn't really anything past that. So they 
they want to go back down to they want to start start from scratch again and working up the the IR ladder again. I guess. I think they should just do that, it on their main account. Yeah. Like I don't know. I just like I understand why. I mean, I racing obviously probably loves it because you know they get double the con or double the money yeah. from one person. Yeah. So I definitely understand why they don't really care, get involved with it, and I I respect that from a business perspective, but. It's not something that actually like really annoys me, but it, it kind of does. Cause I mean, even if you're top split anyways, I think the way I, I racing, I rating works is like if someone who is a lower IR than you finishes still higher than you, then you get less IR than you would normally. So even if everyone is in top split, you'd, you'd gain less IR or you'd lose more IR. If it's like a, th like a, like a three K driver, getting first place in top split as opposed to like an 8k driver um so i think it's still kind of like i don't want to say mm -hmm. it ruins the uh like ecosystem no or i know whatever, what you but mean. i don't know i would say i would say i'm more against it than i am for it i understand why they do it but i wouldn't do it yeah i think it would be much better if nobody did it oh uh, yeah but okay it, it, it doesn't it doesn't trigger me yeah okay I, well so i guess we're kind of on the same page like i i understand why people do it as well i i but i don't agree with it so yeah actually we kind of agree uh that was a, a pretty good uh question there karen um charlie asks what is your opinion on iRacing pulling the vrs gt endurance world championship for this year and only having one pro series for road i don't even know about that to be perfectly honest i didn't know about that either what do you mean um Oh, oh, because isn't the VRS like, like a, the the Pro Series? Isn't that it's GTEs, isn't it? I don't uh, think it's GT3s. Yeah, that's the GTEs. Honestly, I I don't I, really I follow kind of, that. I, I I I never hear about it. Yeah, I kind of forgot it existed. Same, honestly. Like when I think of Pro Series, like all I think of is Porsche Cup, and that BMW now 120 or whatever it is. When I think of yeah. like road Pro Series and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, given, okay, Ben asks, um, what are your expectations for IF 3.5 goals, etc.? For myself? Well, I've been out of practice for the last couple of weeks because I haven't had a wheel. Now I have this, so I'm going to, I'm going to get some laps in. Um, I don't really know how much it's going to do for me because obviously driving that car with a different wheel is going to be completely different majority of the season. I mean, pretty much the whole season, I'm not going to be using this wheel. So, but I would say for myself, I don't expect myself to be fighting up at the front with you and Natsuki and all that, maybe for a couple of the, the races, but I want to, I want to get um, just consistent results and have fun. Like, I don't know. That's a good mindset. No, that's a good mindset, definitely. Um, JD Max asks, uh, oh, it's actually for me. Highlights of Coda race and what? Where do you recommend sitting? Uh, JD. So for Coda, um, the highlight for the race, the WEC race, was definitely the sound. I would say because the sound was just unlike any sound I've ever heard before, in the sense that you know i hyped up there's a lot of times where you hype up something in your head and it's actually for the most part bad to hype stuff up because you end up becoming disappointed in it you know you in your mind you think it's going to be better or really really epic and then it happens and you're like oh it wasn't as good as i thought and i did that the same for for coda i was like the sound of these cars i've never heard the porsche 911 rsrs uh the old ones and the new ones i've never heard them before like this is going to be so loud this and that and it even though i hyped it up so much it was still so much louder than i could have even imagined it it was i don't know man it's it was so loud cuz like when i think of loud i think of the the loudest thing i've ever heard of and then now it's like this is a whole new benchmark like it's it's so much louder than even that so my mind couldn't even comprehend that and that, so that was definitely the highlight for me was just how loud the uh the gt cars were mainly the porsches of course and the uh delara lmp2 i forgot the team name but it's like a delara uh, car they, they were just so loud it was it was incredibly loud um 
deafening for sure like you have to have earplugs for that otherwise you you probably would have hearing damage um definitely uh as for the best place to sit um for coda for uh, f1 i've been going to f1 at coda for years now and i always sit in the s's i really like it for f1 in the s's because you can see the downforce of the cars how quick they move through there and um you can also see like the the arena section the really slow part that everyone hates you can see that as well but also the front stretch is really good so i don't know the, the arena section is a good place to sit because you see a lot of the track the cars are in your vision for a long period of time because they're going slower mm -hmm. but the s's in my opinion i think are the best uh good question jd hopefully that kind of answered some of it uh, Sim Racing Dads asks, God bless, thanks for answering my question. Also, what do you think of the AI and iRacing? I haven't even, I haven't even touched it. Well, that answers um, that question. I think it's cool. It, it's, I, I think it's a cool addition, but I, I, I don't really have I'm any I'm not going to touch it really it. ever. Yeah. Sam. It doesn't, it, it's cool for other people, but for me, it's just, that's. Yeah. Whatever. Um, okay, we're going to answer two more questions, guys. Two more questions. Kyle with the question, Graham, how many subs for... Okay, we're going to answer three more because... Uh, not <laughs> We'll answer this one, but uh, Kyle asked, Graham, how many subs for you to do Road to Pro Oval? So the road to becoming a pro Coca-Cola e-NASCAR driver. How, many, how subs? many subs? Subs. I don't think I'd ever do it anyway. <laughs> Because because that means I basically have to drop road. Not even a which is billion. A billion. <laughs> billion. Not billion. even a billion subs. A trillion, Graham. A, a trillion subs will do it. No, because I that means <laughs> I I'd have to drop road, which is what I enjoy doing the most. I mean, one I'd say two percent of the races I do are oval. I I did one last night. It lasted ten laps, but um, that because I, I I'd have to dedicate everything to oval and i just have to do oval 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 oval, and just it would, it would take months yeah it takes months and yeah i don't know if i would do it yeah i don't know if i could either all right uh last question because that actually was a legit question kyle sorry i thought it was like trolley at first but no that was pretty legit uh last question from hatsona miku uh amg um Jack, are you going to Coda for Indian F1? Also, ask Glam if he's going to any IRL race this year. So, uh, to answer my question real quick, I will be co going to Coda for sure for F1. Indy, I am a little... I don't really know about yet. I, I don't know for sure, because that's actually coming up really Indy? soon. End of March, so like oh, okay. less than a month so from now. Yeah, I think it's like the second or third race of this season oh, cool. like second race or something like that um i don't i don't know for sure for f1 hatsona but definitely for f1 or i don't know for indy but for sure for f1 um and then guam you kind of uh talked a little bit about this any irl races yeah. you're going to this year uh the ones for sure is uh imsa and indycar at laguna seca in september <sighs> that's sick i want to do something else like in the summer but i'm uh I might go to the Pikes Peak Hill Climb this summer. Oh, that'd but be last cool. Last time when it was freaking cold. And and it's like I you didn't was it you told me it was like boring because it's like you just wait and wait. Yeah, and no, wait no, no, no. Yeah, the year I went, I went 2018. It was we we had bad we got weather. They actually canceled it probably at like two or three o'clock because we we started getting lightning strikes up, up at the top of the mountain and it was hailing, so they actually canceled it. But um. Pikes Peak is one of those things where you go once, you've gone every year. Because you go there and it's amazing seeing a car go by, but they don't send the next car until, you, until that car is halfway up the, the mountain. So you see a car every four or five minutes. And it goes by and you sit there and wait. Five mm -hmm. minutes later, a car goes by then you sit there and wait. It's really cool. And But yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to go again just to sit at a different spot i was at uh devil's playground last time which is like right after where that eva went off the cliff that one time yeah I'm i know sure what you're talking you about uh -huh. i want to sit kind of towards the bottom maybe a minute or two up the mountain from the start yeah um and then i don't i don't know if i'll go again after that maybe play in the future but yeah oh definitely um all right well i think that that's gonna be it graham thanks for 
you know, hanging out and talking and stuff. It was of course, dude. It was a ton of fun. Really fun. It was a long one too. Dude, yeah, that this is by far the longest one so far. We're at an hour and fifty two minutes. So Oof. yeah, this is a pretty good discussion and definitely shout out to of course all the questions as well because they definitely yeah, those are those are really good. Yeah, it's fun bringing the questions into it and. Uh, sorry for not having one, of course, uh, last week, the week of the 22nd or 23rd, the week of the 23rd. Um, I was, of course, at, at Coda for the WEC race, so I wasn't able to make one last week. But um, we got guests lined up. I We're stacked, I think, until we're stacked through all of March and the first two weeks of April. So Damn. it's going to be uh, it's going to be really cool. Um Thank you everybody so much for, if you're watching this live, thank you all so much. You know, I've been looking up at the chat. I just haven't been, you know, of course, uh, reading it, um, but, or saying it out loud, I should say, um, thank you for the hosts I've noticed throughout this, the, the follows, all that sort of stuff. It means a lot. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, it, it means a lot. And then also if you are listening to this on Spotify, whether you're commuting to work, school, or just listening to it wherever. I want to say thank you so much for listening on Spotify as well. Uh, that's going to be it from me and Graham. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much. I hope you all have a fantastic day, evening, and night, and I will see you guys again next time. Take it easy, everybody. Thank you, guys. Graham, any last words? Uh, thanks a lot, guys. That was fun. A lot of fun. And I'll see you guys here in 30 minutes. Yep. All right, guys. See you guys.